Taking photos is great, nothing wrong with that, but editing is half the fun. So today we're gonna somewhat enhance a sunset that I saw in Sardinia recently. We're gonna use Lumina Neo simply because it's easy to use. Let's get going. So here we are on the basic editing screen of Lumina Neo. And what I want to do first is to balance out the picture somewhat. For that, I'm gonna turn down the highlights to something like minus 70. And I'll open up the shadows a lot. So something like plus 70, maybe. Let's go, yes, more, more. Okay, that looks nice. Now it's a bit too evenly lit, but we can easily fix that by taking the blacks and bringing them down a little bit, maybe to something like this. With that, our picture is now a bit more balanced, but I don't really have a sunset feel. Do you? No, because the colors are somewhat off. So let's switch down a little bit and go to our color section and move the temperature slider a little bit towards the right. Maybe to something like that. Now we are starting to get a bit more of a sunset feeling, right? Next, I realized in the picture that the horizon is somewhat curved, which thanks to my super wide angle lens is a common occurrence. So for that, we're just going to go down to optics and here turn that lens distortion slider to maybe, oh well, not the other way, to maybe 20, maybe something like this. And it looks much better. Now, as you can see in the photo, I have loads of dust spots and like, you know, little droplets on my camera lens, which looks, you know, frankly terrible. So an easy way to get rid of those is by going down a little bit and going to the erase section. Because here we can simply say remove dust spots. It's gonna think for a second and once it's done, we basically lost all the dust spots in the sky, which is amazing. Look at that before and after, even the little spots, fantastic. Now at this point there is a lot of yellow in the foreground as well, but we can easily fix that by going to the color section right here and simply using remove color cast. I'm gonna drop that to maybe something like 31 or something like that. Let's see, maybe here. So as we can see now, the foreground has cooled down a little bit, which is nice. The next thing is to fix a little mistake that I made, which is if I zoom in, you can see it. Uh, I had so much stuff on my lens that there are like little droplets right here and I kind of screw up that whole area, right? So I could now use Photoshop and spend an hour trying to fix that, or we're gonna cheat a little bit. What I'll do instead is I'm gonna go down to sun rays. I'm gonna drop the sun, <laughs> I'm gonna drop the sun right here at that mountain area. I mean, the sun was there basically anyway, right? I'm gonna go with a really low amount, basically just one. I just need the sun to appear there basically. And I'm gonna enhance the penetration to maybe 55. I just want the sun to basically glow over that mountain, right? So maybe 55 to 60 looks good, something like that. Then we're gonna go down to the sun settings. We're gonna bring down the sun radius a little bit. We don't need it that large. So maybe something like 20, 22 works for here. But I do want it to glow a little bit more, just a little bit more, maybe something like that. Now we just have to add a little bit more yellow to that. So we simply go to warmth and we switch the sun warmth to about 70, really, really make it nice and warm. And the sun rays warmth is actually okay for me there. So we can just leave it at like, I don't know, 42. 42 is always good. Lovely, now we need to give it a bit more character and an easy way to do that, to draw the viewer into the picture is by adding a vignette. So for that, we're gonna choose our vignette section from the side and we're gonna bring it down to minus 80 or something like that. Let's go a lot. We're gonna give it a nice feather, maybe something like 50. And also increase the inner light a little bit, which basically brightens the center part of your vignette. Maybe something like eight works. Next thing I did was to work on the colors a little bit more. So I'm gonna go jump down to color harmony. Where is it? Here we are because I really want to bring out those sunset colors. So let's take that warmth slider and bring it up like maddening, like I'm up to, up to here, 65, sure. Then we're gonna go down to color balance and here, especially in the shadows, we want to introduce some counter color, so to speak, but just ever so slightly. So here in the yellow blues for the shadows, I'm gonna add a little bit of blue, just a little bit, not much, maybe four is already enough. And in the cyan and red, I'm gonna go a little bit towards the cyan direction, maybe minus three or something like that, minus four, minus three works. With this adjustment alone, we have really brought out the sunset colors, which I love. So when I think I'm done with the colors, what I often like to do is to head to the mood section and see if any of these prearranged LUTs or lookup tables or just color styles, if you want, if any of those are gonna enhance my pictures. So in this case, I found that actually the long beach one right here doesn't look too bad, though it's a little bit too strong. So we're gonna bring it down to 12, just a little bit, or to 11, just a little bit of an adjustment. So I do like the colors in the back, in the mountain region, but what I don't like are the colors of the foreground or more so the light and the colors, but we can fix both in one go. Here's what we'll do. We're gonna create another develop module and we're gonna use a simple gradient mask. Where is it? Gradient, gradient, here we are, linear gradient and drop that onto the foreground. So we are only affecting the foreground, most of it at least. Maybe something like this. Then we head to our adjustments. 
And we're going to increase the smart contrast by about 30, something like that. And now the big thing, we're going to take those whites and pump them up. So now we can actually see the foreground that we have and create a bit more dynamic in our photo, which is amazing. Pretty happy with that. So the last thing I need to do is to crop it. So let's head to crop, switch from original to free, and then push that upwards a little bit because I don't need that much. And we can also bring that maybe down a little bit to something like this and the left hand side in a little bit to something like this maybe. Boom, once we're done, we hit enter. And here we have a simple but nice foreground with a beautiful sunset in the background. So if we compare the total before and the total after and the couple of minutes that we have spent on it, I prefer to hang this on my wall rather than the beginning thing. As you can see, Lumina Neo, super easy to use. If you want to check it out yourself, there's a link in the description. And if you use promo code Let's Image, you can save another 10% on your purchase. Other than that, do not forget to enjoy the editing process and manifest whatever is in your head in your photos. Stay safe and have a good one.